Thank you, Perry. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alan Chaibar, president of Bellatrix. And Bellatrix is a leading manufacturer of pharmaceutical, nutraceutical packaging equipment, specifically geared towards primary packaging, unscrambling, filling, capping, labeling, individual pieces of equipment, and uh, turnkey packaging lines. Today, we're gonna to be talking about our Lynx, a new part feeder that we put on pharmaceutical lines to feed items like desiccants, desiccant inserting, or putting scoops in, or putting um, syringes, or could be dosing cups. So any parts that are added to a packaging line that really require uh, manipulation. Typically this is done either at high speed with high automation, very high degree of complexity, or a manual uh, inserting during, uh, using operators. So today we're gonna talk about three major factors that makes the Lynx unique compared to other solutions on the market. The first one is flexibility of formats. So the Lynx is a robotic machine that allows us to feed desiccants of different si shapes and sizes with almost no changeover. End of line tooling would be the only thing that changes plus a different recipe selection. The second major difference is the ease and the time it takes to change over is very minimal. As we said before, it is the changeover of a end of arm tooling and the change of a different recipe. I will show you a little bit later how we create new recipes. The last major feature of the machine is the cost and then the uh, changeover of a tooling does not require storage of multiple toolings that you would have uh, stored somewhere else. Uh, the cost is really very minimal. So in order for us to understand how the Lynx part feeding system, in this case, a desk and inserter set up in this case, um, how it addresses these uh, changeover uh, challenges, let's walk through the setup of a machine just so you can understand how it operates. We have a hopper in the back that you would put the desiccants in a vibratory feeder that dispenses um, desiccants onto a rotary table. There's a camera that determines the amount of desiccants that are fed onto the table and acts as a call sensor for the hopper to dispense either more product or less product as uh, the turntable is moving. The turntable will rotate. There's cameras on top, mounted on the top frame of the machine, that take, constantly take pictures of the configuration of the desiccants on top of the table. Once the desiccants come into the field of view of the robotic area, the pick area, the target desiccants are identified, the ones that I can pick up. Basically, we have end of arm tooling that is able to reach out and pick up these desiccants. We have a conveyor passing through the machine. The bottles are indexed in front of the machine. In higher speed applications, we would put a feed screw here where we could dispense uh, the product directly into the bottle without having to stop it. The robots will go to the turntable in that pick area and pick out what can be picked from the layout, the configuration that we have on the table. Once they are picked, the arms, the robotic arms move in on top of the bottle. We have a sensor in each one of the end effector, the end of arm tooling on each robot to make sure that one, we grabbed a desiccant and number two, we've dispensed a desiccant on top of a bottle. That allows us to confirm that there is a drop of desiccant into each of the bottles. The arm will go back and try and pick up a second desiccant. If the area of picking uh, is exhausted and there are no more desiccants for us to be able to pick correctly or they are in an orientation where we cannot pick, the rotary table will index shaking back and forth allowing us to spread the desiccants into different configuration. The cameras, as I said before, they will constantly pick, uh, take pictures of the surface and identify new targets in order to pick. The robots will go back and uh, pick that new target and put it into the neck of the bottle with the sensor confirming the drop confirmation. In order to increase speed, we can put two arms, we can put multiple arms as, as uh, the need requires. Uh, depends on the payload, which is the weight of the end of arm effector, as well as the desiccant or scoop or syringe or dosing cup that we would use in this application. Uh, it will dictate the maximum speed that we can move back and forth with the robotic. Right now, we are probably running around 50% of the maximum speed allowed on this configuration. So in order for us to uh, 
look at the flexibility of different formats. So for different size desiccants, in this case, we would be using uh, suction cup end of arm tooling for the desiccants. That would allow us to uh, pick desiccants as they sit flat onto the table. So in that configuration, we are looking, the camera is taking a picture and looking at the rectangle uh, of the shape of the desiccant. And with that end of arm tooling, the suction cup would come in and pick the desiccant. It's a fairly simple application because we can pick the desiccant regardless of orientation and also regardless of how it sits on top of a, set, a second desiccant or a third desiccant or if there's a pile of them. As long as we identify the top layer and we're able to go in there with a suction cup and pick the desiccant we're able to pick very, very clearly. If we are looking at something like a uh, scoop, for example, this is a little bit more complicated where you would uh, require uh, that the scoop could fall in this orientation, face down, face up, or sideways. And because of that, when they are clumped together, we need to declump them in order to pick the right target. This is where the turntable will actually shake back and forth to create some separation in the clumps of scoops. And therefore, the end of arm tooling, in that case, it would not be suction cup, but would be a gripping fingers that would grab it and dispense it into the uh, neck of the bottle. There are certain cases where the end of arm tooling would not only dispense into the neck of the bottle, but we actually, we have to press the scoop into the powder, the nutritional powder that is there in, in the, um, into the bottle. Or if it's a syringe, we have to put it in a specific location in a preformed carton. That takes a little bit more time and requires more articulation on the robotic arm in order to put it into, into position. So let's go back to the flexibility of formats. With the desk and inserter configuration, with the same end of arm tooling, the same suction cup, it's really a programming um, configuration. If it's pre-set up previously, the cameras will just look for a different shape rectangle or a square uh, forming the different desiccants. And from that, we're able to pick different desiccants. So the changeover is fairly minimal. Uh, it may require change of vibratory feed on the hopper or a different, uh, depending on the size of the desiccant, that we're feeding, it may require a different timing of the feed sensor or the feed camera that we talked about before. It may require it to feed faster or slower, but they are all format recipes that can be controlled from the HMI. And therefore, with a few selection of formats from the HMI, a changeover is complete for a desk and inserter. For scoop inserting, it may require something like a different end of arm fingers that need to be replaced it does not require a major changeover in terms of different vibratory bowl, different shoots, different vibratory tracks, uh, more complex systems that are existing on the market today. So it takes over the flexibility with the same machine, with uh, fairly uh, simple and straightforward tooling, I'm able to run different formats with just a recipe change. Because of this recipe change, that allows me to do changeover rather quickly. There is some time invested originally in terms of creating these recipes in the first place. However, once these recipes created, are created and are saved into the HMI, then recalling them is just a few clicks away and you're able to set up for a different format. Obviously for different bottles, the gating system, the guide rails will have to adjust, but that's a minimal change. And there's no large cabinet of tooling that needs to be um, stored somewhere in order to do a changeover. There's no two people changeover where you require to he carry heavy parts. There's no disassembly of the machine or different shoots uh, to do that. So it's really, uh, relatively very simple changeover uh, to go from uh, one format to the other. Let's not forget about cost and the ability for us to quickly react to a new format. So let's say you're running one, one type desk in today and tomorrow you want to run a different type of desk in. With a quick call, call to our engineering team, we're able to configure the program or the recipe that you need and send it to you by email. You can upload it into the uh, HMI or into the PLC and quickly be able to run a new format without the need of physical tooling. Uh, if we can use the same end of arm effector. That is, if we can use the same suction cup on different desiccants, then the changeover is strictly electronic. That's a huge advantage in terms of you waiting a week or two or three for additional tooling to come in, especially when we're talking about a vibratory bowl or a vibratory track or, or shoots that need to be welded and uh, finessed in order to run uh, desiccants.
So with that, it gives you a huge amount of flexibility. Now to summarize, the Lynx Spark Feeding System, in this case, the Lynx Desk Inserter, is able to quickly adjust to different formats. In a very short amount of time, changeover is done quickly, and the cost of tooling is almost non-existent. It's either the same end of arm effector or a new set of grippers may be required, which is a minor cost relative to what's available on the market today. With every piece of equipment, we also offer our augmented reality kit, which involves a set of glasses that the operator would wear. Uh, they have a camera as well as a screen and we can walk them through a changeover. So let's say there is a new set of uh, tooling or a new format that you'd like to set up on your new machine. Uh, we can, your operator could wear this augmented reality glasses. We will see what your operator could see and walk through the setup process, walk them through it. Uh, alternatively, we can do the setup at our facility and email you the files and you can upload into the machine. This way, regardless of where the machine is around the world, we're able to support it at a click of one button. So we are setting up some um, interviews with our engineering team to answer some of your questions. We'd be happy to uh, take a call from you. So please, at the end of this presentation, there's a phone number or an email address. Please contact us and we'll be happy to uh, jump on a call with you and go over the different features and specifically discuss your projects, uh, whether it's for desk and scoop, uh, syringes, dosing cups, or any part feeding that you need onto your pharmaceutical line. Thank you very much. Back to you, Perry. Uh, question number one regarding um, if we insert scoops or drop them into the neck of the bottle, is there a difference in the configuration? And the answer is yes, absolutely, there is, there is a difference. So we can choose the different degrees of movement of the robotic arm in order to match the application or the scope of applications that we need to do. For example, if I need to pick up a scoop and just drop it into a neck of the bottle, it requires um, less degrees of freedom as opposed to if I need to pick it up and actually press it in. Because when I press it in, I need to make sure that the arm is pointing downwards. So I, I don't need to just drop it into the neck of the bottle, but I need to actually press it with the arm down. So that requires a wrist which is equipped onto this um, robotic arm that allows us to pick it up and then rotate it and press it down into the robotic, uh, into the neck of the bottle. Question number two, thank you. Uh, this is related to the guarding of the machine. You see the green lighting. Um, this is the um, standard conventional lighting that we have on all of our equipment. This replaced the status lighting that we have, the stack light, the conventional stack light. Um, it is green when the machine is running, it is amber when we are short on components, and it is red when there's an error or when we press e-stop or open the guard. At the moment where we open the guard, the lights turn from uh, red to a white, where it is a high intensity white light that allows us to see the work area and be able to make adjustments to the machine. The third question is related to the orange nozzles that we have on the machine. So yes, you see a couple of orange nozzles uh, behind me. This is a dust, a dust extraction manifold that we put in. This is a powder application. Uh, we are inserting desiccants into a powder jar as the bottles are moving. Uh, and when we are inserting, we get a, a small cloud of dust generated. So these dust uh, collection ports are required to uh, control the dust amount into the uh, working area. 